Okay, everybody, it's 205. We're going to go ahead and get started. Thank you guys for being here. Thank you for being on time. Today, we're going to talk about all about avocados, including Laurel Wilt. Uh, we're going to spend a good amount of time on Laurel Wilt. It's a very important disease that's killing avocado trees. It's fatal. Uh, somebody in the chat already asked if I could talk about the, the beetle and Laurel Wilt. So yes, I'll definitely be doing that. We had a couple questions about fertilizer, so I'm gonna cover that. And then we have some specific questions, which I'll look at if we have time at the end. Um, my name is Jeff Wasileski. I'm the Commercial Tropical Fruit Extension Agent for University of Florida in Miami-Dade County. Uh, I know we have a lot of new participants today. So extension, what that is, is the University of Florida does extension. And we have an extension office in every single county. So Miami-Dade is my county. I know some of you are looking in from other counties. Um, and I'm located down in Homestead because that's where the commercial uh, acreage is. So let's go ahead and, and get started. So welcome to Tropical Fruit Tuesdays. Today we're going to talk about the avocado in South Florida. This webinar will teach you the basics on South Florida's biggest tropical fruit crop, the avocado, and special attention will be paid to the devastating disease, Laurel Wilt. So we're gonna end with Laurel Wilt. Um, and then coming up, we have propagation by cuttings and division. That's in two weeks. In four weeks, we have properly growing the jackfruit. Uh, and then in October, we have tropical fruit with attitude and what that will be is fruits that have some sort of issues, some sort of problems that I can help you with. So for instance, avocado would fall there with laurel wilt because that's a big problem. So that's some of the attitude that avocado is giving us. Um, so uh, let's go ahead and get started. First, we're gonna talk about uh, where you can get information. A really great place that maybe some of you don't know about is called EDIS, E-D-I-S. EDIS is a um, database of University of Florida publications. And you can't get into EDIS unless you're peer reviewed. So it's very hard to get in there. So it's very good information. If you notice this EDIS on the left, it has this little check mark. That means it's been peer reviewed. And this one is about Laurel Will. Um, we also have Edis's on just the avocado itself, which is very good. I have a copy of it here. And this page I'm showing you right here is many different cultivars with all their different um, attributes like season, flower type, fruit weight, fruit color, cold tolerance, production, scab susceptibility, and if it's recommended for, for you. And then it most of the edises for different tropical fruit have this really great page, which tells you when to fertilize, uh, when to water, when to look for insects, when to look for disease, when to prune, and ha this is uh, January through December. So very good edis information. Um, and you can look, at, there's also information on specifically on avocado pests. There's, um, this Laurel Wilt is for commercial growers. There's also one for Laurel Wilt for homeowners. And there's also establishing a grove for avocado uh, growers. So another place you can get information is just other universities. If the University of Florida doesn't have information on something, you can always type in, you can um, search your subject and then space and then edu. Edu is, is, will help you find different universities. Uh, another good place to get information is YouTube because you can actually see what you're, what you're learning. So I'll often look at uh, videos in between just other things and try to add to what I know. Uh, another great place to get information is Master Gardeners. I know some of you watching today are Master Gardeners, so thank you for coming. I myself was a Master Gardener and I really appreciate Master Gardeners. Uh, the best place you can probably get information is your own garden or your own grove because that's where you know if you see something you know it's true if you see something grow a certain way and then you treat it with certain something and it works then you know it it's true 
So that's a great place to get information. And then finally, beware of where you get your information. Just because you read it on the internet or somebody posts it doesn't mean it's true. So be very careful with where you get your information. So starting with the avocado, uh, the scientific name is Percy Americana. It was actually first introduced into Florida in 1833, so almost 200 years ago, so that's pretty amazing. There are three races of avocado, Guatemalan, West Indian, and Mexican, and then you have some hybrids of those. Uh, the Florida avocado, which can be um, Guatemalan, West Indian, or a Guatemalan, West Indian hybrid, or West, or Mexican hybrids. It won't just be straight Mexican. Mexican, the race is, um, it, it let, prefers higher altitudes and cooler temperatures, so we can't grow those in South Florida. Uh, but it's a very good source of potassium. You can get some vitamin A, and it's lower in fat than the typical avocado, the small little avocado that you get, uh, that you probably think of when you think of avocados. The, the small avocados are Haas. That's the cultivar name, and they're uh, Mexican Guatemalan hybrids. So we can't actually grow those in, in South Florida because of our humidity and our heat. And they're indigenous to tropical America. This breaks down a little bit of information on the different um, races, West Indian, Guatemalan, and Mexican. So their origin, tropical lowlands for West Indian, highlands, for Guatemalan and Mexican. The foliage, if you crush the foliage with the Mexican, you get sort of a anise scent. Uh, the blooming season is there, February to March for West Indian, March to April for Guatemalan, January to February. So they're all pretty early on in the year, except Guatemalan. And then the maturity season, when the fruit are gonna be ready, uh, May to September for West Indian, Guatemalan, September to January and June to October for Mexican. And then there's this little thing down here that says hybrids have intermediate characteristics. So you get a lot of hybridization. Okay, so here's some West Indian types just to show you. Uh, you have Donny, Dupuy, Hardy, Simmons. These are West Indians. Um, Guatemalan, West Indian hybrids. You have Nader, Miguel, Beta, Booth 8. And like I said, this Edis will have all these different um, cultivars and it will tell you more information about them. Uh, more, this is Guatemala West Indian hybrids. You have Booth 8, Choquette, Lula, Monroe. Some really good ones there. And the Florida avocado industry. I want you to know a little bit about that. Uh, avocado in Florida is the fourth largest fruit crop um, by, by um, acreage and by uh, economics. So citrus, obviously number one, strawberry number two, blueberry just jumped avocado to number three, and avocado is number four. In South Florida, avocado is number one because we don't grow those, those other things commercially. Um, we have about 125 square miles for our avocado industry, about 7,500 acres. The economic impact of the South Florida avocado industry is about $100 million when you include the packing houses, the handlers, the fertilizer companies, all those things. And we have about 450 growers and 35 handlers. And this little pink sheet on the left, we're going to look at that now. The, oh, we're going to look at that in one second. So the, the, like I said, we have about 7,500 acres. We have about 100 acre, 100 trees per acre. So about seven, uh, 750,000 trees. And the, the second biggest crop in South Florida is Longan at only 1,200 acres. So you see there's a big drop there from one to the next. So when we have this terrible disease, Laurel Will, it's really devastating our, our growers. So now we can look at this pink sheet. Um, this is a federal, this is part of a federal marketing order. So what that means is 
Uh, the only fruit that we have in South Florida that has a federal marketing order is avocado. What that means is you can't just pick it and sell it like you can the other fruit. It has to be a certain size and a certain weight. So if you look at this, this uh, sheet, this is what commercial avocado growers have to go by. So let's say we're growing a Simmons avocado, which is the second one on the list. We have these dates, A date, B date, C date, D date. So A date, the, the earliest you can sell a Simmons avocado is June 22nd. But it has to be a minimum weight of 16 ounces and a minimum diameter of three and nine sixteenths. And then once you get to July 6th, it can be a little smaller. And then July 20th, it can be a little smaller. And then by uh, August 3rd, the D date, any size goes. So what this helps us to do is make sure that people aren't picking their fruit early and selling it early. It has to be mature because an avocado, not like a mango, think of an avocado, when it's ready, it's still green. When it's mature, it's still green. It doesn't turn yellow and red like a mango will. So in order to get full maturity, we have this chart that they have to follow. So that's just an interesting uh, little tidbit for you guys. Okay, so when you pick your avocado to grow, it has to be properly propagated. What that means is we're gonna grow our avocados by grafting. So on the left, this picture is a, a class that I taught on propagation and everybody's practicing grafting avocados. On the right, we see, this is actually a mango, um, and this bottom, this little line right here is where it's grafted together. So we take a piece of a mature avocado that we know what it is. Let's say it's a Monroe. So we take a piece of the Monroe, we graft it onto a seedling avocado, and um, that's how we get, that's how we know we have a Monroe avocado, and that piece of that Monroe is already sexually mature, so we don't have to wait for it to go through all the stages of sexual maturity like we would with a seed. If we plant a seed, and people love to plant avocado seeds, that tree can grow 12, 14 years before it ever produces fruit um, because it has to go through all the stages of sexual maturity. So if you purchase an avocado and it has a name, then it's probably already grafted and you don't need to worry about it. What you do need to worry about is your neighbor giving you an avocado or you growing an avocado from seed. You don't want to do that unless you're just doing it for fun. Okay, so not from seed. Here's an avocado, uh, here's a nursery selling avocados. Every one of these is grafted, all these different avocados. They're all grafted because we need to know the cultivar, we need to know what they are, um, and we need to know um, that they're already sexually mature. Okay, so I'm gonna stop right here for one second and take a look at the chat and see, cause it's building up. So let's see if I can answer any of these questions. Okay, the first one was, if time permits, please touch on the beetle. So yes, I'm definitely gonna do that. Um, Lisa asked, why does one of my two avocado trees have several different limbs? Uh, that's natural for avocado trees to have several different limbs. Um, that's actually good if they're going sideways and not straight up. So that's a good thing. And she also asked, I noticed the leaves higher up look like they've been eaten. There is a little caterpillar that eats some um, avocado leaves. That's not a big problem. And then we have Dan is asking, what's the best fertilizer? So we'll talk about that. Carla asks, is there a Haas type avocado that can be grown in Miami? No, Haas cannot really be grown in Miami, unfortunately. Uh, Benito says, my tree is four years old. It's 20 feet, but it doesn't bloom yet. I would guess, Benito, that you have a seedling and or, or though, although four years old, it can still be not ready to bloom yet. So I would give it another year. If it goes straight up and down and it doesn't really spread that much, it's probably a seedling. Uh, Carmen asked about fertilizer, so we'll talk about that. Uh, Milagros asked about when to prune, we'll talk about that. 
Uh, Kay is saying our tree is just producing fruit this year. The avocados are the size and shape of a lemon with very thin, thin skin, makes it hard to peel. Would you know the name of this avocado? I don't, I don't know the name. If you wanna send me pictures, I might be able to figure it out. Um, and where do I find a schedule of these webinars? What I just showed you at the beginning, that's as far as I have it scheduled out. I have it scheduled out about two months in advance. And if you want to get notice of these webinars, email me and um, I'll put you and ask to get on my email list and then I'll put you on my email list. And then you can get um, information on the webinars. Um, we have a lot more people than usual in this webinar. So I think um, I want to thank whoever it was who sent this out in different ways. I saw it was on like next door app it got into the sun sentinel so that's pretty cool uh we just hit 100 participants so that's definitely a record uh so thank you guys so much for showing up hopefully it'll be worth your time um someone asked when's the bet what's the best place in, in florida to start an avocado farm probably down at homestead elizabeth asked i'm looking for a hybrid avocado tree or dwarf one preferably i live in a townhouse don't want to plant a huge tree. Any recommendations where I can get them? Elizabeth, if you will um, email me, I can give you a list of um, tropical fruit um, nurseries. Lewis asked, I have a young, probably Monroe avocado, which started to yield fruit the last two years. But when it starts developing fruits, fall when still small, is it normal? Or is there an issue? I'm not sure about that question. I don't quite understand it. Um, Miller Gross asks, we have plenty of avocados, but it seems squirrels or other animals took them. Yeah, that's a problem. Uh, squirrels are a big, big problem. Um, so not much you can do except try to pick the fruit as soon as it's mature. Uh, Maureen agrees with that. And someone asked for the link for the jackfruit class. That will be um, not available until like the week before the class. Um, Julia can't get any sound, so hopefully she can now. Lynn planted a tree from seed. It was bearing fruit in four years, so that's good news. Uh, what's the best time of year to graft the avocado? I do have an Edis on, um, on propagation, and it covers grafting, and it will tell you when the best time. Avocados, really, the winter is the best time to graft them. Um, which is the opposite of just about everything else. And I did do a webinar on grafting. So if you want that, email me and I'll, I'll give you the link to that. Someone's asking about a cultivar. I don't know what that one would be. Verna says, my neighbor used to have an av avocado that matured January to February. Um, I would look at the, the chart. Um, Brooks Late is probably one there or read. Um, it was on next door grade. Uh, we had a tree we brought from a nursery six years ago. No blooms or fruit. We we're told it was the late season. It's under a bit of shade. Um, how long do we wait? So, man, we got a lot of questions here. So I'm going to stop on the questions now so we make sure to get through um, the rest of the information here. So someone just said they had a, a tree in the shade. So what this picture is showing is we need full sun for our avocados. So if it's in the shade, that's not great. So you want to plant a full sun. When you dig the hole, you want to dig the hole a little bit bigger than the container. Check the roots. Make sure the roots aren't circling around. If they are, cut those circling roots. Plant the tree just a little bit above the ground level, just like a half inch to three quarters of an inch. If you put it too deep, that's really bad. We have some mango trees here I'm showing you that were too deep, that were, that died because they were planted too deep. Once you get your tree planted, protect it somehow, either put rocks around it like this, pull the weeds away, put mulch around it like this, or this is a commercial grove. They actually cut a piece of ground cloth and, and keep it like that. And then you can see they sprayed herbicide here. I wouldn't recommend spraying herbicide, but in these big commercial groves, that's a something that they 
have to do. Another thing you can do is just like this mango here or this avocado here that has all the mulch around it. You can just pull the grass and keep it away. The reason you want to protect your avocados is because of this. You don't want this. This is weed whacker damage. So we're looking at a dead avocado that I pulled out of the ground, laid on the ground. We're looking at it from above. So you can see right here was where it was planted. Here's the first flare root. So that's a good level that it was at. So it wasn't too deep. But we can also see that it was really damaged by a weed whacker right here. And what that does is in these woody trees like mangoes, carambolas, lychees, longans, and avocados, the middle part is what's called um, the xylem. And that's where the water and the nutrition goes up. But the outside is the phloem. That's where um, um, the food that the tree makes goes down to the roots. So if you cut that, you're strangling the tree, you're girdling it. So that's why you don't want your trees to get weed whacked. So go outside and look at your trees and see if they're being weed whacked and then try to, try to stop that. Okay, so as far as watering in South Florida, we have two seasons, wet and dry. And the dry season is gonna start about November and go to about April. We only get about 14 inches of rain during that time. May to October, we get about 43 inches of rain. So you can see that's the best time to plant would be early May, because then you're gonna catch all that, that um, rain and you're not gonna have to water as much. So our soil in South Florida is this, this uh, limestone here. It's a hard rock, that's what it looks like. And it's high in pH. So a lot of questions about fertilizer. So a good fertilizer for most fruit trees is eight, three, nine. So those three numbers what those are, are nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. On every fertilizer label, you'll have the three numbers, and they're always nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium. Nitrogen makes the leaves green, makes the tree grow. That's the first number. The last number is for flowering and fruiting. So that's why you see that number is a little higher. So that's good. So that's what you want. Now, if you're having trouble with your tree setting fruit or fruiting, I would try something like a 0024, where it's just all potassium, and that will help to um, help the tree set fruit. So we're going to get questions like, when do I fertilize? So this is granular fertilizer. This will come in a bag. You're going to put on long pants, long sleeve shirt. You're going to put on a little mask. Um, you're going to put on gloves and you're going to put it in a bucket and you're going to throw it around your tree. So I would do that. If your tree is looking healthy, I would do that maybe once or twice in the summer months. So starting in June, then maybe in August. Or if it's looking really healthy, maybe just June. You don't need to do it if the tree is, is looking pretty good. Uh, but that will help the tree to um, be very healthy. Now, I'm also going to tell you about minor elements, these are major elements, these nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium. Minor elements are things like iron, zinc, manganese, boron, and those you're gonna actually put onto the leaves. So don't worry too much about this chart, don't, don't worry too much about it um, because it looks really difficult, but what it's showing you at the bottom is the pH. So seven is neutral right here. Anything above that is alkaline. And the soil in South Florida is much, is, is above seven. It's because of the limestone, the rock I showed you. It's about here, about 7.8 to 8.4, around here, somewhere in here. So these little lines, the fatter they are, the easier they get picked up in the soil. So you can see things like iron, manganese, boron, copper, and zinc which were the minor elements, don't get picked up well at the high pH. So what that means is you're going to put them on as a foliar spray. So you're going to do your granular, but then also two to three times in the summer months, you're going to spray the leaves with a foliar minor element spray. And then this is where your granular fertilizer should go on the left. 
here's your tree. You see this, this um, line around here. This is called the drip line. You're going to put the fertilizer right out here in the drip line, and you're going to spread it out really well. This picture on the right is exactly what you do not want to do. You do not put it in a clump. You do not put it next to the trunk. This is absolutely terrible what was done here. Um, and I'm sad to say this was on our property. The, the grounds crew did this. So the only good thing is I had a picture to show of what not to do. So, Okay, pruning. We'll talk about this. And I did do a whole webinar on pruning. So if you, if you want to see that, you can ask me for the link to that. Anybody that asked me for a link, I'm just going to give you the links to all the webinars so you have them. So why do we prune fruit trees and avocados? We do it for size control. It makes them easier to spray. The fertilizer I just talked about, it helps with disease because you get better airflow. It reduces the amount of chemicals you need to put on your tree because the tree is going to be more compact. You get higher quality fruit because you're getting good airflow. You're getting good sunlight. And the overall health of the tree, you're taking out any, any dead wood or any bad wood like that. And it also, it's, it makes your tree look very nice. Okay, so the tools I use to prune are a hand pruner on the left, in the middle, a lopper, and then a handsaw. Handsaw are for big branches. Uh, the lopper is for about a half inch to an inch and a half. And then the hand pruner is just like a leaf or something very small. So these are the three things I use. These are the actual ones that I use. Um, I like these because you can take them apart and sharpen them and clean them, except for the handsaw that you would just replace the blade. Uh, this is what I don't use. I do not use a um, chainsaw. I use that. I do have a tree here on the property where I work that has laurel wilt, so it's dead. So I'm gonna take it out, I'm gonna use a chainsaw for that. But I don't use that for pruning. It's too easy to make quick cuts without thinking about it with a chainsaw, so I don't do that. Okay, so some pruning tips for avocado trees. When the tree is small like this, you're gonna tip the branches if necessary. So if you're just getting one long branch, one long central leader, I would cut that to make it go sideways and branch like this one. This one I did not prune, but it's going sideways very nicely. It's got a lot of different growing points you can see. So this one I don't need to tip. But if this were a single branch, I would cut it to make it have multiple branches and go sideways. And then when those branches got a little longer, I would tip those as well to keep the tree very bushy. You're going to keep tipping until the tree is about three years old because that's when you assume it's going to be able to give you flowers and fruit. So you don't want to keep tipping because that will affect the blooming. Um, about three years old or, or longer, you take out any strong verticals. So if you have any really strong branches going straight up, you're going to remove those to control the height and keep the tree going sideways. In general, you don't want to prune more than a quarter of the foliage. This is for bigger trees. If you have someone come in and, and arborist prune your tree, make sure you talk to them that they don't prune too much. Because if you prune too much, you kick the tree into putting out leaves instead of um, flowers and fruit. And when do you prune? You prune after the last fruit is picked. So these younger trees, they don't have fruit. You just tip, tip, tip in the summer. Uh, but with the older trees, when you pick that last fruit, that's the time to, to um, to prune. Okay, and then the commercial groves, they actually do this. It's called hedging and topping, where they use these big machines and they just cut it to make it look like a hedge. They cut the top, that's called topping. They cut the sides, that's called hedging. Um, they just have one big long hedge of avocados. So this is a tree on the left that I was very tall and spindly. So I got really aggressive with it. I pruned it very heavily. You can see this cut here. And there on the right, you see how it grew back very nicely. Uh, it actually had so many new growing points that I had to select some of the better ones. Um, so this is a very aggressive technique. So I probably wouldn't 
um, tell you to use this, but I'm showing you that avocados are very um, adapted to pruning. They come back very nicely. Okay, and we covered this when to prune. Uh, that would be after you pick the last fruit. And here you see an avocado grove that's um, in need of some pruning. See all the shade down here. All this middle part is not getting sunlight, so it's not going to, to um, flower. One thing I want to tell you about besides laurel wilt is the avocado lace bug, especially for you master gardeners. You're going to get people sending you pictures like this one on the left. And what that is, if you turn the leaf over, you have these little bugs, these avocado lace bugs, and they do that damage and that's what causes it. The good news is this usually happens right when the tree is about to drop all its leaves and put out new leaves. So you don't need to spray or do anything uh, for this. Okay, so now we're gonna get into laurel wilt for the last part of the um, presentation. So I'm gonna go ahead and look at the questions real quick. Um, any thoughts on commercial avocados more up north in Florida? I think um, as we were warming a little bit, I think you can get a little further north with your avocados and people are doing that commercially. Felipe asked, does hammering iron nails into the tree do anything? I wouldn't do that. I don't think that's a good idea. If your tree needs iron, um, there's a product called Sequestrine 138. Sequestrine 138. That's a uh, chelated iron. And that works really well to give your tree iron. Matthew asked, I had a tremendous amount of small grape size avocados growing on one tree a month or two ago. They all fell off. Do you have any thoughts? And how do you prevent this? It's sometimes normal for, for avocados to lose a lot of fruit like that. And one thing you can do is that potassium that I told you about. So like a zero, zero, 44 or a 0024, something like that, that will help to keep the fruit on the tree. Um, Verna asks, what's the smallest acreage practical for avocado farming? I would say probably five acres. Julia asks, can you cut up avocados and freeze? I don't know if you can freeze them. So if somebody knows the answer to that, I know somebody does, go ahead and put that into the, um, the chat. Uh, any tips to ripen an avocado? Baking an avocado in the oven didn't work as in foil as found on the internet. Well, you need, need to make sure that the avocado is mature when you pick it. Because if you pick it too soon, it's never going to ripen. Um, and then you can put it in a, like a paper bag with a banana. That's usually the trick that works. Renee asked, my tree did not grow for two years. Stayed at 12 inches, then jumped to 10 feet and bear fruit on the third year. Now 20 feet and the tree is full. Uh, that's great news. Um, any suggestions for growing anything under the avocado in the backyard, ferns, give it a wide berth. Uh, aeroids are good for underneath. Uh, Juana asks, when do we fertilize? So I hope I covered that. Carmen asks, I use the one on the screen, but mine states with Sutrex, is that okay? Um, she's talking about the fertilizer. Yeah, that's, that's fine. Um, David asked, should you fertilize with fruit on the tree? I think it is okay to do that. Julieta says, Julieta says, is avocado tipping necessary like we do with mangoes? So like I said, if it's already spreading, you don't need to, but if it's not, I would tip it. David asked, after pruning a mature tree, do you need to apply a coating? Uh, no, you don't. What you do need to do is kind of protect that cut from um, full sun. If you do a big drastic cut like the one I showed you, I covered that up with um, the, the leaves or the branches that I cut so it wouldn't get sunburned. Uh, Free, yes, you can send me the picture. Uh, Elizabeth says I freeze guacamole all the time. Costco sells bags. So everybody's saying yes, you can freeze. Um, someone asked, can you tell us more about the links we can ask for? Those are just the links to the past webinars. This one's being recorded. Uh, so that means after this, if you wanted to watch this again, I could give you the link and you could watch it. Um, okay, so let's get into the final section here. We have uh, just about 
five minutes left. So we're going to go through this. Laurel Wilt, it's been detected everywhere. These are the states that's been detected. I believe it's 11 states. It actually came in here in Port Wentworth, Georgia in 2002. It came in in a little tiny beetle called an ambrosia beetle. The beetle is as small as if you look at a penny, you look at the date on the penny, maybe a couple of those numbers, well, it'll be that small. It's very small and it's a fungus farmer. So it's carrying a fungus inside of it to grow. So it drills into these native trees over here called swampe that are related to avocados. They're in the Laureaceae. So they're in the Laurel family, same as avocado. And it grows a fungus inside the tree. And you see it's gone as far as Texas. It's in every county in Florida, the disease. And like I said, it came into Georgia in 2002. This is the name of the fungus, Raffaella lauricola. It attacks trees in the Laureaceae, which there's over 500 species. It's killed half a billion native trees. In South Florida, it's killed about 120,000 avocado trees. The vector, the original one is this, Xyloborus glabratus but that's not the one that spreads it in South Florida. It got to Miami-Dade County in 2011. It got to our first avocado grove in 2012. So this is a piece of wood and you see these little galleries. The beetle drills into the wood and makes these galleries and grows the fungus. So that fungus is growing inside the tree and what happens when that fungus is in the tree, it's actually in the xylem, that middle part of the tree that I showed you. That's where the water goes up. So the tree tries to block the fungus. So it uses these things called tyloses. So tyloses form in the xylem to block it off, to cut off the, the fungus. But the fungus is aggressive, it jumps that, and it keeps trying to block, 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 block. And then finally, it blocks itself so much it can no longer get water and the tree wilts, it dies so quick the leaves don't even drop off. So that's what causes it. The beetle is growing the fungus to feed its young and the tree super reacts to the fungus. So this is a little piece of wood that I cut because I wanted to have it to show my growers um, and you see it's very small. It's about one inch by three inches. I brought it back in a bag and then I put it on my desk to um, dry out. And then 10 little beetles. Here's one of the beetles right here. Here's another. 10 beetles came out of this small little piece. So here's a dead avocado grove. Everything you see that's green is a weed. All those trees are dead from Laurel Will. And this is where I cut that one inch by three inch piece. So you can imagine how many beetles are right here. And each beetle has the ability to spread the disease. So the disease can move by the beetle, but also if trees are right next to each other, the roots are touching, they're grafted. <clears throat> so the disease can actually go right through the roots as well. So here you see about two or three trees that are all right next to each other and they died by root grafting. It can also uh, move if you take some of the wood and move it from one place to another. So the symptoms, you'll start out with this, the sort of um, wilting. You'll see a section will die first, the leaves stay on the tree. You have these little sawdust tubes, which I think I have a better picture of later. And if you cut in to see the xylem, it's dark. It's not light, which it normally would be. You have sawdust. You have all these little holes. These are the, the, the boring galleries. Here you see all the sawdust tubes. So on the, on the left, that's normal xylem. It's white. And on the, the middle, that's a dark xylem that's caused by the um, fungus. So unfortunately, when you have a tree that has lower wilt, 
there's nothing you can do. You have to destroy the tree. So if you're a commercial grower, you constantly scout looking for these trees and you pull them out and you destroy them. If you're a homeowner and you just have one tree, you need to get it removed because it's going to be a hazard. But the odds of it going to another avocado tree in your yard are smaller unless your trees are close together. Now, this will not attack mangoes or lychees or long ants or anything else. It only attacks um, avocados and related trees like swamp bank. So here's a grove. It had one tree, they did nothing, and it became 95 trees in just six months. So that's how fast this can move if you don't get aggressive with it. So advice for grove owners and arborists and, and for you as well, scout for trees with symptoms, remove the trees quickly, remove the stumps, because you don't want the roots to keep touching the other trees, chip the tree or haul it away or burn it. Do not leave the wood in place. Do not store wood anywhere. Keep trees pruned. The, the, the beetle that attacks these trees or, or that drills into the trees to grow its fungus, it doesn't like a lot of sunlight. So that's another good reason to keep your trees pruned. A large dead tree left in place is a dangerous and a hazard, so you don't want to do that. And if no other avocado trees are near the diseased tree, you can just cut it flush with the ground. You don't have to remove the stump. Okay. So sorry to end on such a bad note there with um, Laurel Wilt, but um, the good news is next time we'll talk about cuttings and division, propagation. So that will be a little more um, uplifting. Um, I don't know if you want to really to get into growing avocados at this point because of Laurel Wilt, especially commercially, it's going to be difficult. If you just have one tree in your yard, the beetles do not like small trees or young trees, but once the tree gets to a certain width, I would say, you know, uh, five, six inches, that tree is, is, could be in danger from Laurel, Laurel Wilt. Okay, so I'm gonna look at the questions. So someone's asking, where can we get grafts from? If you're asking about grafted trees, I do have a list of um, nurseries that sell grafted trees. If you're talking about the top part, the scion, uh, you would have to get that from somebody that already has an avocado tree. Uh, Donna says you should freeze in chunks. Um, okay, someone's asking for the links to previous seminars and they gave me their email. If you would email me, um, that would be great. My email is right here. It's sflhort at ufl.edu. Um, Violet says, I'm a novice at this. It's been interesting, informative, learned a lot. Thank you. Well, thank you, Violet. Um, Joan says, when's the best time to fertilize? So that's going to be in the summer months. So I would start in maybe um, May or June and then go every other month, two or three times. Same with the, the foliar spray. Uh, Lisa says, is there anyone you can contact to come look at trees in a person's property? I look at commercial groves, but I don't do homeowners. Uh, we have a list of arborists, if you're looking to prune, that I could give you. Um, Julia asks, how do you know when the avocado is ready to pick? Um, it depends on your avocado. If you know the, the um, cultivar, you can look at the chart and see when it's about ready. But if you don't know the cultivar, uh, you want to see maybe when one or two avocados fall off and, you, and they ripen up, then that's a good time to pick. Um, Jim says, you the man, well done. Thank you so much, Jim. Uh, and then we're getting a lot of thank yous. So that's my cue to say goodbye. A um, lot of thank yous here. Thank you guys so much for coming. Um, and I hope to see you in two weeks from now. And have a great rest of your week. 
And thanks again for coming, guys. Have a good day. Bye-bye.